This is George from Tech Legion. You know, for a long time, Top Flow Cooling was really the choice of enthusiasts, and it was really the only game in town. But of course, that fell to the wayside, fell out of favor with enthusiasts who went to tower coolers instead, which typically offered better performance, but also had a much taller form factor. Now we're seeing a huge shift towards small form factor computing once again, which is bringing back Top Flow Coolers and the need for enthusiast class Top Flow Coolers. So, be Quiet is answering the call of two new pieces, their top of the line enthusiast class Dark Rock TF, as well as their mainstream line Shadow Rock LP, which is a low profile top down cooler with a 120 millimeter fan. Getting with Shadow Rock LP, uh, once again, be quiet, it's typical packaging, all black, nice picture of the cooler on the front, just a couple specs on the back, you know, that we're going to take a look at. Uh, as you can see, it does say it is rated for 130 watts TDP. Um, since there's really no standardized uh, test or measurement for that, we kind of throw it out the window, but um, it does give you relative within the Be Quiet line exactly where it stands. So, you know, you're going to get about the performance of a pure rock out of this as far as, you know, top end performance. Now, it does stand 75.4 millimeters tall, as well as comes with a 120 millimeter pure wings fan, 1500 RPM, 51 CFM, rated only 25.5 dB. Uh, Be Quiet makes some of the best fans on the market, uh, as you may or may not be aware. It's got the typical uh, dimpling in the fan blades as you see here and it's a really a nice looking cooler all around for a small top-down cooler as you see brushed aluminum outer plate here with the four heat pipe caps with all aluminum on the sides and copper heat pipes as you see bare copper with copper uh, plate which is finished with nickel so let's get a closer look at the unit itself now the Shadow Rock LP, being part of the Shadow Rock line, is part of their mainstream line, as you see here, but still a very nice looking cooler. Good finish on the sides. Like I say, the closer look at that uh, top plate or end cap, whatever you'd like to call it, all brushed aluminum, nice looking. The uh, Pure Wings fan, good looking fan, you know, sits on top. So when you take a look inside the case, you are gonna have a nice look. Now taking the fan off, and actually I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and. Go through the top just to make life a little quicker here. And closer look at the fan. Good looking fan, not sleeved, but it is black all the way to the end. Uh, the Pure, uh, Pure Wings fan is part of their budget line of fans, but is better than probably any budget fan you're going to find out there. Uh, still very, very quiet, but doesn't have all the uh, little accoutrements that, you know, the Silent Wings or Shadow Wings fans are going to have, but still very, very good fan. Now taking a look at the tower itself, like I say, 74 uh, 75.4 millimeters tall and very, very simple layout. You've got four six millimeter heat pipes, as you see, all copper. And two do wrap around to a smaller array of fins, which is mounted down the bottom. Now, taking a look at this, um, honestly, even though you know this is part of the Shadow Rock line, the uh, soldering job and just the finish of it is really not quite what I've come to expect from Be Quiet. Um, the bottom typically would have the thermal interface material pre-applied. Uh, we did take that off for testing, as you know, and um, just something about it isn't quite up to be quiet standards. You know, still a good looking piece. I mean, you know, at the price point, it's, you know, not a bad cooler by any stretch of the imagination, $39.95, but I'd like to see the solder a little bit cleaner and, you know, just the fit and finish just a tiny bit better. Um, it does stand up for to what we see in this price class, but does not stand up to the high standards that Be Quiet is set. So all in all, like I say, four six millimeter heat pipes with the two wrapping around through the uh, fins once again, very, very slim array of fins up top, so you do get the really short stature, and it's going to be really good looking in the case. One thing I do want to point out, as you see, you really don't have a whole lot in the way of RAM clearance, so you're going to have to keep to standard height RAM. Nothing with a heatsink uh, whatsoever really is going to fit too well, so something definitely to keep in mind. Now let's get it in the case, see how it performs. Take a quick look at the accessories. First off, limited warranty. 
Next up, we've got the install manual. Uh, as you can see, the install manual for each socket is just one picture with an exploded view with an explanation. It is an intuitive install, so it's pretty easy to follow along with. I wish it had been a little more step-by-step -step picture wise, but should be able to follow along. And finally, uh, just really essentially a parts list in more exploited views, multi-language. Uh, this sheet more of a parts list than anything else. Moving on, you've got the one size fits all backplate. 775 spacer for the backplate. Two fan clips, Intel retention brackets, center crossbar. The AMD retention brackets are simply for the clips. They simply attach to the crossbar like you see here. And we'll use the factory clips on the uh, your AMD motherboard to do the tie down. Very simple installation on AMD. Got all of your standoffs as well as screws little wrench and I did want to point out thermal interface material is included and pre-applied on the cooler itself. We're not going to be using that. We're going to take that off and um, use Noctua NTH1 which we use for all of our testing here. So now one thing you do have to do before moving to the case the backplate these four screws and rubber washers come separately. The backplate as you can see there's no front no back no top no bottom all completely asymmetrical. So you've got the three slots, 775, 1150 series, 1366. Put the screw into the appropriate slot. Come around the other side, just slip the rubber washer on. There's a little locking mechanism right down at the bottom and it'll hold it in place. And you've got your four screws in place for the back plate and we can move on to the case. Now getting into the install, really pretty simple. Uh, first, take our back plate, as you see, and we're going to mount it to the back of the motherboard so that the screws come through. So just push that right on through. See the screws will come right through. Now you're going to take standoffs. As you see, one side has threads for a screwdriver. The other side has a rubber washer on it. You want to put the rubber washer towards the motherboard. They'll screw right down. Now they do have a stop. So you just want to keep turning until it stops. And in most cases you can do this by hand without a problem. And you can always go back. Just make sure with the screwdriver you're completely Tighten down. Like I say, don't over tighten, you will feel the stop. Once that's done, top and bottom. to install the retention brackets or retention bars as the case may be and they will go as you can see with the angles pointing towards the CPU choose the appropriate slot for the socket you're using same as what we saw on the back plate inside 7075 1150 series 1366 and the four small screws will hold them into place. Again, you don't want to over tighten. Just snug them right down. And repeat on the bottom. And you're set to put the cooler itself into place. Now with the mounting system in place, we're going to get the cooler in. We're going to need obviously the cooler itself. Center bar. 
and the two screws with the larger heads, which are found in the kit, uh, clearly marked in the kit and on the paperwork. So first step, you'll see the retention bar is notched on one side. That will go towards the CPU and fits into this notch you see right here. And once you center it, it actually drops into place and locks. Next, tricky part here being you need to get the two screws into place. If you're doing this on a flat surface, it's going to be far, far easier than doing what I'm doing here. I'm actually going to have to hold the one, and we're going to want to put the two screws into these two screw holes right here. So I'm going to get the first one started. And the reason this is so difficult is the screws do not fit through the holes in the tower. So they have to be on and in place prior to it going into the case. Okay, once you've got both started, you can then proceed to tighten them up. They do have a stop. Of course, don't want to over tighten. And go back and forth. And one thing you want to notice, core itself is that the heat pipes go to the left towards the VRM. Otherwise they will hit um, for a slot of RAM. Or as you see here, it sits just over the RAM. Uh, standard height RAM as you see here, not a problem whatsoever. Fits right under the tower itself. So we're all in. Now I just need to put the fan on and wire it up. And all together the fan obviously clips on with the two fan clips, top and bottom. And yeah, Nice look in the case. Uh, really, you see the footprint of the Be Quiet with the copper heat pipes on the side, so you get a decent look in the case. Very, very short stature, so if you're limited in height, you've got no problems whatsoever there. So, all in all, um, not the easiest install, but not the most difficult. I uh, really didn't like the um, fact that we could not fit the screws through the tower itself, so yeah, that did take a lot of finagling trying to get that together. Uh, if there was a slightly bigger cut out um, on the heat sinks themselves, just you know, lose a fin and makes the installation much, much easier uh, as far as that goes. And finally, look at the RAM clearance. You've got about 33 millimeters there, so any hopes of getting anything with a heat sink on there is uh, really just not a possibility. So standard height RAM only, you got about 33 to 34 millimeters. Going into the performance of the Shadow Rock LP, what we got was essentially exactly what we'd expect from a 3995 low profile cooler. Taking a look, the Shadow Rock matches up almost identically with the Fantex TC12 LS, which is also a 3995 low profile top flow cooler. And as you see, the numbers across the board are uh, essentially identical. But um, one thing I do want to point out, I had said earlier that the Shadow Rock LP was a little louder than expected. Now, while that doesn't really show up well on the dB meter, uh, it's really a question of the tone, the pitch. It's a little bit more intrusive, definitely more noticeable inside the case than the uh, 12 LS, and much more so than we expected from a Be Quiet piece. Definitely has a different pitch than uh, any of the other Be Quiet colors we've tested, which would be the whole line. You know, it's just got a different type of tone to it. Definitely more noticeable. Now, um, just take a quick look. The uh, Shadow Rock LP, of course, we don't expect it to match up with the Cryo Rig H7, but we did want to show you the difference going from a uh, 3995 tower to a low profile cooler. And also, you've got in here the Thermolab LP53, which is even shorter than the Shadow Rock LP, but it's also kind of a freak of nature and does cost about $15 more and is very hard to find, but it does do a bit better cooling job with about the same noise level. Um, at a little bit higher of a price point. But all in all, like I say, the Shadow Rock LP had solid performance and exactly what we expected from a top quality 3995 cooler. 
you know, it might have sounded like I was nitpicking a little bit uh, as far as the installation went and also as far as the solder and whatnot and build quality. But, you know, that's only due to the really high standards that Be Quiet set in the past. And the Shadow Rock LP is actually a very, very solid choice in its price class and for its size. It doesn't stand out from the pack, but it's definitely solid and, you know, right there with, you know, the best of the mainstream coolers at this price class in a top-down cooler. It was a little noisier than I expected, uh, but other than that, you know, the cooling performance was right on par and, you know, install was very, very easy and, um, all in all, you know, it performed very, very well. Um, as I say, solid choice, not a stellar choice, you know, not a standout from the pack, but solid. So if you happen to be a fan of Be Quiet, it's, you know, definitely going to work out for you. Or if, you know, you're just looking for, you know, something in this price range, it's definitely, like I say, a solid choice. Well, with that said, I'm going to give the Shadow Rock LP a High Tech Legion Silver Award. Solid choice, you know, you're not going to go wrong with it, but also not going to stand out from the pack.